And my guests are seated. And I want to quickly go into introducing them. And then we'll get into the nitty gritties of our discussion this morning. Joining me on the set this morning is Pius Enamajide, who is a deputy information manager. Pius, thank you very much for joining us on, on this morning. Thank you Also with us this morning is Dr. Eric Odrosai, who is a private legal practitioner and governance expert. Uh, Doc, thank you for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, we'll be joined shortly by Abdul Malik Kwekubako. And if the cameras will capture the documents that have just been deposited on the desk, he is in the building. And he'll be taking his seat very shortly. Also joining us uh, shortly is Felix Kwachufosu, who is a former Deputy Communications Minister, will join us shortly. I wanted to start with the hottest headline in the last 24 hours, which is the controversy surrounding the NDC presidential primaries and the filing fee that was pegged at 400,000 Ghana CDs and an additional 20,000 CDs cash down to pick a form. There's been a lot, of, a lot said about this, but I guess the man who typified the controversy is the General Secretary of the NDC, John Singh Asedo Nketi. I wanted to listen what he's been saying over the last 24 hours. So... Weigh yourself well. If you want to be the president, then you consider your options very well before you come in into the contest. If you want to pretend, you bring your money. We also pretend with your money. You, you will not have the option of demanding any refund. So it is up to you to decide. And in any case, it will cost money to undertake a campaign, a presidential campaign. So we shouldn't create the impression that once you become a flag bearer, then the party is going to get money from somewhere to give you to do the campaign. You must have the capacity to also uh, raise funds to support. Demonstrate your capacity to raise funds for 2020 now that you want to be a flag bearer. Please, how much is too much? <laughs> Can you tell us how much is too much? <laughs> Nobody knows. What are you comparing with? So far, the questioner doesn't appear to uh, give us the comparison. But let me tell you, when we say that there are hardship, it means cost of living is high. But somebody must pay the cost of running the elections. Who is going to pay? I have not declared to be a presidential candidate. So those who have declared <laughs> to be presidential candidates must pay the cost. If you, if you compare these monies against the cost of organizing the activity we are talking about. You see that the party will still have to raise money to supplement whatever will be uh, accruing from these filing fees. So I, I don't see how uh, anybody can say that it is. If you want to compare us to MPP, MPP three years ago were charging 500,000. We were all with you here in this country. Did you complain? <laughs> and three years on, we are charging 400. <laughs> and you still say ours is too high. In fact, when we talk about social democracy, it is not equivalent to poverty. <laughs> you see, many people have uh, some wrong understanding of what social democracy is all about. Social democracy is not poverty. What I'm saying is that every flag bearer worth his salt must be able to raise money to finance his own ambition. If you cannot raise money to fin finance your flag bearership ambition, then you cannot be a president because it is also part of your duty as a president to also be able to raise for, um, funds for the nation. Over the years, you've had people who are not really 
uh, um, serious in leading a flag bearer, um, parading themselves as, oh, we, too, we want to be flag bearers to lead um, our party. And I think leading as flag bearer and wanting to lead a country is more of a serious business that only those who are serious must, must be given the opportunity. Democracy is not an open sesame. It must be able to also have some restrictions that protect itself from abuse from people who are not serious. It hit me like a thunderbolt when I heard it because I didn't expect it to be that high for a social democratic political party. Um, you think it's too high? It's yeah, it's, it's, it's high. I mean, clearly, because previously it was 50,000. And then from 50,000, we are moving to 400,000. That, that is on the high side, you know. But that notwithstanding. For you, what would have been an appropriate figure? Well, even in opposition, I think that 200,000, um, uh, which would have been about 400% of what existed, pre what was um, paid previously, could have been. Um, even acceptable, but 800 percent was for me something mind-boggling. It appears, in one breath, as a, a deterrent, you know, to prevent others from uh, contesting or throwing in the towel. There you have it, John Singh, Asiedu Nketiah, the General Secretary of the NDC. And also you had uh, uh, Professor Jampo, is a political scientist with the Same University of it. Ghana. And you also had uh, the, uh, one of the spokespersons for the Joshua Alabi campaign, uh, Mr. Kwashiga, also speaking about the matter. He throws in the conspiracy theorist's point of view, <coughs> which is that the amount of money had been put there just to discourage the others from contesting and so that they can fall off. The race. We've been interrogating all that on news file today. I, I want to start with you, um, uh, Dr. Drew Sai, on this. I mean, you listen to John Sidney Gitter. He has a point, hasn't he? That you, you must be in a position to raise 400,000 CDs if you want to be the president of this country. If you want to lead the biggest opposition party of this country, you should raise 400,000 CDs without blinking. Let me say good morning to our listeners and viewers. Um, I will not subscribe to that argument at all. Um, you know, he can say that if you want to be the flag bearer of the NDC, <coughs> you want to raise 400, that's fine. But I will not agree to that uh, understanding that if you want to be a president of this country, you should be able to raise 400,000. It's about branding. If that is how the NDC wants to go, that's fine. But I think we have a serious challenge in this country, a serious ch challenge of having an unregulated environment where political parties are given the opportunity to determine how much their presidential candidate would have to pay. Two, we need to ask ourselves, what are we doing about political party financing? Because as he was speaking, it dawns on me that he wanted to say that, in fact, he said it that you need to finance campaign activities mm -hmm. and the party needs money. So then this will be one of the ways of raising funds. Then it tells me that if you have a lot of people coming up to put themselves up as presidential candidates or to come in to lead the NDC, you get more money. But that is not the way to go. I think uh, as a country, we would have to regulate it. If you look at what the NPP did, 2007, going into the 20, uh, 2008 elections, they charged 25,000. 2010 to 2012 elections, they charged 25,000. 2014, going into 2016 elections, they charged 85,000. The NDC in 2014, going to 2016 elections, charged 50,000. Now it is 400,000. You know, so I do not think that the conspiracy theory is working here, but I think it is. It's it's. It's us as a country uh, or as a people that we should regulate that particular environment. I do not also see it as a way of getting others uh, not to be able to raise their funds. No, I see it as a decision taken by the National Executive Committee of the NDC. Uh, but they were able to do so because it is an unregulated environment. So I'm but, saying but, that. But why, why, why should, why should everybody regulate how the party funds its primary? 
Okay, because the party's primaries would help us have a president for this country. And we need a good president, of course. So all of us should be interested in who becomes the flag bearer of the NDC. If we are starting with huge sums of money, asking somebody to pay 400,000 Ghana cities uh, as a commitment fee, sort of, and then 20,000 Ghana cities for the form, where should the person raise the money from? Indirectly, when the person wins the elections and eventually becomes the president of this country, he should have ways and means of recovering these monies. <coughs> so we should be interested in that. If we are not able to regulate it and we allow it to go, we'll get up one day in this country and a political party would say that flag bearers should bring 10 million Ghana cities. They will struggle to get the 10 million. They will win the elections. Who follows through to check where they get the money? I mean, the things they do to get the money back. That may be the beginning of unnecessary corruption in this country. So I think it is an environment we should regulate. If we leave it open-ended, we are going to have a big problem in this country. But what do you say to the, uh, the other argument, which is that what the NDC has done is actually the best way to grow a proper democracy, where you only get people who really are up for the game, who, who, who have a grand swell of support, people who just don't support them by paying lip service, but are willing to put money into the person they believe in. In other words, the, that argument goes, if you have a million CDs as your, as your filing fee, and the guy can go around the country, like Obama did, and crowdsource that fund, and raise a coalition of people who believe in him, that is the kind of person who, I guess, when he's elected, will represent the people's view. Because he, because he, is, he was put there by people who put money into his campaign. I'm, I'm raising that because one of the aspirants, a day after this was announced, seemed to be doing just what I'm saying. Joshua Labi sent around posters of him asking people to dial a certain number to contribute money, to, to donate money to his campaign. And look at what he said in that poster. He says, I intend to tackle corruption by first tackling the funding of political campaigns. That is why I have decided to build this mass movement on the convictions and donations of the Ghanaian citizens. This is my pledge, that my allegiance will be to you. He's telling you indirectly that I'm going to deal with corruption. And so I'm not going to use the regular channels of going and getting some biz corrupt business guy to give me the money. I want you to help me. If you believe in my campaign, put money into my campaign. That's how I'm going to deal with corruption. Isn't this why we need such high amounts of money to force people to go to the people and say, if you believe in me, invest in me. Well, we've got it wrong then. Because funding an individual's primaries is an individual affair. The people he or she goes to for the money, we may not know them. As soon as this person wins the primaries and becomes the party's candidate, it becomes the duty of the party to do the fund mobilization. So if stage one, you want the person to pay this high amount, Ask yourself, where is the person getting the money from? That is the unregulated you, you part I'm talking to, you, about. That, that argument seems to be based on an assumption that the only place to get the money is through business people and corrupt people who might come later on to make demands of them. That will make them corrupt when they're in government. No, that assumption is rebuttable. But, but I, that's, what, I, that's what you seem no, to be I am suggesting that we yeah. should know where they get that money from. Yeah. If we are pegging it at 400000 we should make sure that they declare the source. That is very important. Because if you ask okay. me... So that's where the regulation comes in. That's the regulation okay. comes in. Dis di disclose and declare where you raise the 400000 from. And make sure that that money is coming from a very credible source. Once the person wins the primaries and he becomes the party's presidential candidate, then the fund mobilization process becomes the duty of the political party. So at this stage, I think we should manage it in such a way that as soon as he wins, the party then comes in. Uh, outline their party fund mobilization machinery to support the person to win the elections. No, but, but, that, but, but that, doesn't that doesn't make what the NDC had done and, uh, wrong necessarily. Because you're talking about regulation. That's not a, it's not a political party's duty to regulate itself. I mean, there's a law. The laws have been passed yeah. to do that. They have simply said, this is, this, is, this, is, this is an association. This is an association. If you want to lead us, this is how much it will take for you to do it. If you say we should pass a law, yeah, that's go up to Parliament and the people of Ghana yeah, to decide. That. We need a law I, to regulate if, how yeah. how aspirants seeking to lead a political party raise funds. Yes, Evans, I will not fault the we NDC. We don't have the law yet. No, so, I, I will not fault the NDC in any way for pegging it at four hundred thousand. Okay. 
I'm faulting those who are accusing the M NDC for pegging it so high ah. that it is an unregulated environment okay. and it is about so branding. So they are allowed to do what they do? It, 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 right. By law, and mm -hmm. it is about branding. Yeah. This is their party. They said anybody who wants to lead the party, we should be able to raise 400,000. Mm -hmm. My point is, we should know where they are raising the 400,000 from. And we should make sure that once they win the election, they owe you no obligation to, to let you know. They do not know. That is why I'm saying it is an unregulated environment. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't talk about it. Ah, so you should let them just go and raise the money. They should raise the money. If we want to talk about it, then we should regulate it. Okay. And Felix just joined us. And I, in fact, I intended to start with him. And, but, but Felix, I need to hit you just when you start. No problem. So, so um, and I, fair to say that you are a firm. In your family in the corner of JM? Absolutely. Absolutely, okay. Yeah. Is he able to raise 100,000, half a million CDs? Well, I do not know about Mr. Mohammed's finances, but <laughs> like every other aspirant, he would have to comply okay. with the directive. Is he um, one of those the, who was the extent that, begging for the thing to go? Well, I'm sure that if uh, he was told that he would not need to pay anything, he would be extremely grateful. <laughs> but as things stand now, that is the position of the party. So until it is reviewed you or comply. revised downwards, Mr. Mahama is obliged to comply. But there are a few points that we need to clarify. Certainly, 400,000 Ghana cities is a lot of money. But within the context of organizing the primaries of the scale that we are going to embark By the way, to, we know now yeah. it will cost the party 8 million uh, cities yes. to pull it. So up. when you look at that figure and the logistics and the sort of mobilization that you require to be able to undertake that effort, um, 400,000 cities per head appears to me like a necessary sacrifice and contribution that needs to be made. Mind you, the party has not said that this is the only way that it is going to raise money to finance this activity. There are no guarantees, as I speak to you, that even all 12 or 13 persons who have indicated their willingness to contest the flag ownership slot are going to file and therefore are going to pay. Of course, you can speculate that based on the stature and standing of a few of them, it is a given that they will be able to meet this, this request. Others to you can say, for certainty, will not be able to, to, to uh, meet it. But whatever it is, it is only a minor, if you like, a part of the amount of money that is required. We are talking of primaries that would encompass 300,000 delegates. As we speak to you, it is the largest electoral college that we have in this country. It is a huge undertaking. You have people coming from 29,000 branches, nine branch executives, both elected and unelected. In addition to this, each of the 275 constituencies has to bring 28 people. And then there are all manner of people, former ministers, former parliamentarians, and whatever. So when you put all of, all of that together, we are talking close to 300,000 delegates. These people need to be transported. They need to be fed. Um, venues need to be rented. PA systems need to be rented. I mean, arrangements must be made for the media. The Electoral Commission, indeed, I hear that they are charging 3,000 Ghana cities per constituency. And that also arises out of their own cost. So you need to meet that obligation. So there's no room for maneuver for the political party, the NDC. The second point is that some have claimed that this 400,000 figure is at variance with our ideology as a social democratic party. Isn't it? No, with the greatest respect to those who hold that view, it is a deeply flawed position. Look, the Electoral Commission will not charge us any less because we are social democrats than they would the NPP because they are capitalists. When you go to the market to procure the items that you need, the ideology that you subscribe to will not lead to a rebate for you. So you will be charged commercial rates. So there's a certain reality, an objective one at that, that we need to face as a party. I guess, that, I guess the argument is, is that mm -hmm. if you're a socialist party, mm -hmm. you, you appeal to the masses. Yes. And so in raising funds, mm -hmm. you go to that route. Yes, but the point is that... But you, you mm -hmm. see, this, what the argument is that what no, this... No, yeah. Social Democrats. Social Democrats. Social Democrats. Democratic Party. Yeah, social okay. democratic, yes, mm -hmm. social democratic party. Mm -hmm. So grassroots is the, the yes. thing, masses, yes. you know, I yes. mean, in contrast mm -hmm. to the NPP, yes. which is seen as elitist. Yeah. But this is, I guess the argument is that this is more elitist because then you're only taxing the few 13 to fund this big project. No. When you could really do what the NDC stands for and go to your masses and, and get them Not at all. That you're right. <coughs> Essentially, you can say that these aspirants, because of their prominence and stature in the party, have become conduits for the mobilization of that resource. In fact, nobody is expected to dip his hands into his but unless he has the means to do so and fork out 400,000 Ghana cities to come and pay. In fact, despite the complaints that have come from some of the aspirants, I, I don't know whether you are aware, various 
Fan, uh, uh, what call it? Fan mobilization efforts are underway. It's true. Yesterday, it's I saw uh, Mr. Alabi. Alabi, I just short read it. Yes, yes. Uh, I read something from uh, a background supporter. I don't know whether it is entirely accurate, but if it is not accurate, I can be forgiven. I only am repeating what I saw, yeah. indicating that anybody interested in contributing to that effort should come to the headquarters, his campaign headquarters, and do so. Uh, I'm aware that the JM campaign will soon launch an official short code through which contributions can be made. Indeed, 96 parliamentarians who support JM have already launched a short code. Mm -hmm. And indeed, they say that if each of them they pays... They open an account. Yes, if, if each of them pays 4,300 cities, the figure will be covered. Yesterday, our former constituency chairman, Fasherman, who is a businessman, volunteered to pay half of the amount, 200,000... To JM. To JM, because oh. he believes in his course. Okay. Indeed, Mr. earlier in the week, earlier in the week, when JM went to Asawasi, the Asawasi constituency said that irrespective of the amount that is charged, they will be willing to pay for the forms for JM. That's 20,000. Absolutely. I'm also aware of a group of 420 people, and I'm part of those, that group, that is saying that each of us will pay 1,000 Ghana cities, which will cover the amount. So we may well end How up... How many of you again are you? 420. Okay, that, that, that in this yeah, alone will cover exactly. this easily. So we may well end up getting far more than the 400,000 that is being sought. Mm -hmm. But the point I, I sought to make is that this is an implicit admission by the candidates themselves that they are not expected to dip their hands into their own pockets or coffers and bring other money, and that they can use various structures within the party and various fund mobilization efforts to realize this money and pay. Apart from that, there's also an argument that by virtue of asking people to pay 400,000 uh, Ghana cities, we are basically mortgaging the party to the highest level. In fact, that is, that is Babang's point of view, that the, uh, this, uh, the NDC will not, shall not, be, will not be sold to the highest bidder. I beg to differ. Uh, uh, what do you call them? Evans, you know we've held two primaries already. We've held the Youth and Women's Congress and then recently the yeah. National Delegates Congress that elected our national executives. There is a, a, a team, a finance committee of five people who have raised funds for that effort. Now, if you look at the amounts of monies involved, averagely, each of them has raised far more than the 400,000 Ghana cities that the aspirants have been asked to pay. Now, it cannot be argued that simply because they have raised that level of funding, then the party has been mortgaged. I, I'm, I'm sure you don't even know the members of the no. finance committee. So how can an argument be made that merely because you pay a certain amount of money to contribute towards an exercise, the party has been mortgaged to you? I think we need to but, be objective. But, but you, yeah. don't you also agree mm -hmm. that the 400,000 cities will price some of the aspirants out of the race? But the Could point is that, price them out of the you race. see, one of the most compelling arguments that has been made in this debate has come from uh, Professor Jambo. And he has said that, look, when you aspire to become the president of Ghana, you must come to the table with some gravitas, some stature. You must be able to sell your vision so that people believe in it. Like we believe in GM's vision and are willing to pay 1,000 Ghana cities on our own across 420 reports. Like millions that in the U.S. believe in Obama Absolutely. and $1, raised, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $
of someone who wants to become president to mobilize that resource. And you may find that we may even realize far more money than we intended, which would be great, because then it will ease the burden that we have to carry when we move into the, what do you call it? As for the regulation that is required, of course, um, to the extent that the, the relevant authorities feel <coughs> that there has to be regulation, why not? That as we speak, it is an unregulated environment. Mm -hmm. So the NDC has breached no law. Again, it is not even entirely in, uh, accurate that there is no level of accountability in these matters. You know that in June every year, or after every election, the Electoral Commission requires the political parties to render accounts. I like the way you put it. They Absolutely. require, but the oh, yeah, parties oh, but we it. The parties <laughs> oh, no, we do. As far as rarely I know, do on time. As, well, as far as I know, the NDC has complied with yeah. that obligation. So, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure the MPP has as well. I don't know about the other political parties, but we do. So what I, I, the, 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 the point I, I wanted to make was that there's a level of accountability that goes on. All these monies that we are realizing must be accounted for. And that is why I'm happy that it has generated debate and discourse. There's a myth that has surrounded political party financing. People think that it necessarily breeds corruption. I don't necessarily think so. I mean, I'm going to contribute 1,000 Ghana cities to the Jomama effort. How does that 1,000 Ghana city entitle me to any corrupt, uh, what do you call it, opportunity? Yeah, but, 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 yeah. but a chairman, mm -hmm. is that chairman, chairman? Yeah, yeah. former a chairman. Former chairman, yeah. who's going to come to 200,000? Well, he's a businessman. He can afford it. Exactly. Why? But, there are but business he's a men. businessman. Why? The likes of... Why? Is, is he yeah. for that Christmas? No, he's not. But he exactly. lives in the court. But why? There are people who donate millions. Yeah. There are various interest groups. But they want millions. something back. No, he has not indicated that he wants anything back. <laughs> but that is the no, problem. No, you, know? you see, the, the amount that he contributes will not preclude him from the same opportunities that every other Ghanaian is entitled to. That's so, not true. Wh why, why is it not true? What is the, what is the, to, what is the objective evidence that you have? Thousand. But the point I'm making is that the, the, man, no, the man on his own volition says that, look, I believe in your mama. In the 2016 campaign, I branded my four-wheel drive in his pictures. I am absolutely in love with the man's vision. So this is my contribution. So he's just to doing campaign. it because Absolutely. he loves the man. But I'm saying not that because he I'm saying wants that anything it back. will not entitle him legally to anything more no, than you'll be entitled to. He's not, enti he's not entitled to do anything, mm -hmm. but it puts him ahead in the queue. No, but that is only if he is wants it, it, is only, it is only speculation. No, what I get is really speculation. I come on. Until no, we, we have, know that's, no, that's what happens. No, you see, until we have concrete evidence. Today. Why? Um, oh, but, we, but we see people in this country mm -hmm. who got contracts because they were part yeah, of Yeah, but there are people too who have come nowhere near party financing and he but has so, to have so a contract. But, but I'm saying that, you see, so the problem of corruption, contracts. the problem of corruption is a much deeper one. Maybe on another platform we can discuss no, but it. But we need to but discuss but it yes, here I agree. as part of the conversation. Yes, yes. So you can put in place mechanisms to, to forestall that. Maybe deeper regulation, what have you. But uh, in the MPP premise of 2014, I recall that at the last minute, uh, Nana Akufuado had to pay 600,000 Ghana cities to bail out the party over issues of transportation or so. At the time that he did that, it was necessary for him to make that sacrifice. There were other contestants in the race who perhaps did not have the capacity to mobilize that resource within that short time. But Nana Akufuado did it. I'm not sure it may have given him an advantage because the delegates would then see that he's a much more serious minded person, that he is the one who possesses the well without mm. to mobilize resources to prosecute the campaign. But I don't think that it can be said that at that stage, the party had been mortgaged to him simply because he made that contribution. So in a nutshell, the debate is OK. But let us separate the idealism from the realities. The reality is that we have a huge bill to meet. And so every effort, to the extent that it is legitimate, that we can embark on to finance that activity, must be engaged in. And I completely disagree with these claims that we have lost our, our bearing as a social democratic party or that we are mortgaging the party to the highest bidder. It is simply not true yeah. on the evidence of the facts uh, I'm available. Waiting, yes. Having said, I'm mm -hmm. waiting to hear what the founder of the party will say once they ask friends <laughs> who say they are meeting to petition him, petition him and he gets mm -hmm. to speak. Well, let me add before you go that. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, if the aspirants feel that they want to petition the party to review, they are entitled to do so. I'm sure the party will give them a hearing and to the extent that their case is sustainable. Why not? Yeah. But up until the time that is done, the JM campaign and all other campaigns have indicated that they are going ahead to mobilize the resources to pay up so mm -hmm. that the party can have its, its, its Congress. Pius, yeah, it's the, you, you, you can't have a complaint about 400,000. When, when you have a party that run a, a Congress and your aspiring chairman spend millions buying vehicles days before the Congress, it amounts to the same thing. No, it doesn't. And these are uh, two different scenarios. The narrative around the... Uh, scenario that you discussed is uh, different and I will take time to explain it but allow me to say good morning to you and my colleagues and our cherished viewers and listeners. Uh, I am particularly saddened uh, by this development and ordinarily my attitude would have been that this is an internal NDC matter and that uh, we should leave it to them uh, and decide upon and invite
invite the good people of Ghana to watch what the NDC is doing. But to the extent that it is indicative of the NDC, is, the NDC is a, an opposition party that is positioning itself as an alternative, to the extent that the people of Ghana need to know how the NDC functions, their creativity, how they mobilize things, and that these have replications and implications on how they do govern this country when they take over. I think that I'm also interested to discuss this matter. But before I get to that, I think that I have to put it out strongly that the Secretary General, the General Secretary of the NDC, uh, uh, put out fake news. Mm, Pius, you have to forgive me. I, my, my technical team says that you have a slight challenge with the microphone, so we'll correct that and then we'll come back to you to make your fundamental submissions. But so far, all that he said is that he believes that there's an issue there because as a political party, uh, they are uh, a, a constitutional organism and therefore they cannot fundamentally uh, interrogate. You cannot say you will not interrogate what they do internally because what they do have implications uh, for national uh, policy, democracy, etc. And that's where he started. We'll, we'll, come, we'll, come, we'll come back to Pius for him to expand on this shortly and also hear from uh, Abdul Maluk Kubaku. We'll take a short break. We'll return. We'll delve into the other matters and then ask the fundamental question that others have raised this week, which is that if you cannot raise 400,000 CDs, then you have no business even aspiring to lead this great country. Where do you stand on that conversation? You can share with us on our many social media platforms. Stay with us. This is Newsfile. You are live on News File. My name is Evans Mensah. Uh, my guest in the studio, Abdul Malik Bako, also uh, Pius Hajideh, who is the uh, <coughs> Deputy Information Minister, uh, Dr. Drosai, and the, also uh, with me is Felix uh, Kwachifoso, who you know as also a former Deputy uh, Communications Minister. Pius, you, you, were, you were dealing with uh, the claim made by the General Secretary of the NDC that the NDC, you, your party, the MPP, three years ago uh, pegged 5,000 CDs as a filing fee for your aspirants, correct? Well, he indeed say, he, he indeed say, he did say that, 500,000 CDs. 500,000 CDs, yes. Uh, and, and I am getting worried about the pension of the NDC General Secretary to pedal for sold and publish fake news. And it has been, uh, it is becoming quite repetitive and I am getting worried about it and I think that he has to watch it. The other time uh, on national television uh, he went out at uh, Mr. Duya Ajimai and peddled falsehood. The NPP never charged 500,000 Ghana cities for its filing fees. Three years ago we charged 75,000. Before then we charged 25,000. And so I, 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 it tells you again what, I mean, how serious the NDC as a political party is. This is basic. It is too infantile a mistake to have been made at that level, at the highest level of decision making of the NDC national executives when they sit in a meeting. They cannot verify and validate this basic fundamental information. Tells you the quality and caliber of governance that we are all being. Uh, 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 exposed to, and these, and that's why I'm saying that the serious view with which I take this matter is that these are people who are seeking to come and govern this country, and so we must be able to tell how they will govern this country by their conduct in opposition. And I'm saying this is a very sad day for democracy, not only in the NDC. Why? Well, because they've got a figure I'll, wrong. And I'll, I'll not no. I've, I've dealt with the figure matter, and I think that as for Mr. Sebin Ketia. Maybe diminishing returns. The man has been at it for God knows okay, how so, long. So move to the substance. And so, I think you, you, so, you, and, your party issued a statement and, about it. Yes, let's, let's and you, you, you just played his voice. He's saying yeah. for he's asked some questions like, okay, he's not pay, who is going to pay for it? He doesn't want to be president, yeah. and somebody has to pay for it. Yeah. But when at the end of the day they get their flag bearer, and the nation is going to bear the cost, that one. Who is going to pay for that one? When is the nation? I mean, when the NDC has a flag bearer, when the MPP has a flag bearer, yeah. when the CPP has a flag bearer, nobody turns around to say they should go, those individuals who want to be president. He, and he made the point that I didn't want to be flag bearer, you want to be flag bearer, so come and pay for it. 
It's the attitude when we are going to elect a president that it is the people who want to be presidents who pay for the, the process. They lead no, the process. They, they, they lead the, the fundraising process. But I'm saying that the state, the Electoral Commission, puts in a lot of money. Okay, I get the you. Electoral Commission doesn't say that because you want to be president, come and pay monies to me. Mm. But I'm saying to you that it is looking like maybe diminishing returns. Because these are fundamental errors that at the highest level of the general secretary of a political party, you should not be making. But let us go back to the main point. I'm saying that this is a rape on democracy. A rape? Yes. Why Look, the decision-making space, the right of individuals to determine what is good for them and who should lead them has just been replaced by money. Who has the ability to mobilize more money is the one who should lead us. That defeats the whole essence of democracy and endangers it. It also exposes us to you talked about corruption. I mean, we can have an argument about it and speak all the fine English, but let us not take the wisdom and intelligence of the people of Ghana for granted. The people of Ghana, Evans, know what you are talking about. And they know that for a former constituency chairman in Ashaman to say that I'm going to cough out 200,000 Ghana cities is not for charity work. And that the man is in his mind sowing the seeds for what you call political benefits and political advantages. And as a country, we all should be working towards moving away from this practice. We are talking of over including 700... Including And I'll come to the MPP. Um, we are talking about, uh, of over 700, uh, 700 and over percentage increase. Now we are being asked, Evers, that who is going to pay for it? Somebody has to pay for it. You, do you know that the scale of the election that the NDC is going to have going forward. It's even less than the scale that they had a, a couple of years ago. At that time, there was only one candidate, but they charged that candidate 50,000. How did they find the money? Is it because they were in government then and that they could then mobilize the state's money and they used that, election, that for the election? Have anybody answered the question how the last election of the NDC, the last presidential primaries of the NDC was paid for when the sole candidate, president uh, at the time, uh, John Dramani Mahama was the sole candidate and paid only 50,000. They were able to hold uh, elections across this country for all Cadbury members of the NDC. Which number is even bigger than the, the conference that is going to elect the, 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 the coming flag bearer? But today we are being told that somebody has to pay for it. In the last one, who paid for it? Does it stand to reason that because they were in government, they were able to mobilize resources, maybe even f some from within the system to be able to pay? So these, these, their, own, their own argumentation raises major, major issues about the perception of the NDC when they were in government. The fact that uh, people were uncomfortable and people thought that the state's money <coughs> were being diverted into partisan political activity. You recall the case of uh, the budget for the building of uh, uh, hospitals and some monies which were diverted to do uh, uh, Mr. Rojo, uh, Mr. Rojo Metal's case. That some, 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 some monies were... No, he said it. He didn't deny no, but it. He, he, he said... To deny he, that no, but he, his voice... Possible. But you, he, you guys interviewed him no, on your I'm network. I'm also telling you and then he said what, that what he did, they, he they had conducted some research mm. and there's all the... Uh, you conducted your, your, this multimedia, your network conducted all of that and all of these are now leading people to believe that the perception that people had always had about the NDC when they were in government is true, because now they are struggling to, to raise money. But you see about creativity again. This strategy, is, this strategy the NDC strategy, is exclusionist. I can assure you that not more than five of the, the, the presidential candidates today will be able to raise the money. They have, they have started complaining. They have started complaining. Now, if you took even the 50,000 that you took in, in the previous uh, uh, era, the last election, the 50,000 that you took, if you were still able to take it, and all the 13 people were able to pay, do the mathematics, you will find out that you will end, you will end up getting more money than the 4.2 billion old cities, the 420,000 Ghana cities that only one individual will be able to pay. 
or but even if you brought but it but down. What you're saying, based on assumptions, you don't know. No, about. I'm Whether, doing the calculation. No, but you're assuming. But the that people themselves have. They, if, they have all said, the, if all the 13 yes. raise 400,000. No, I'm saying that if all the 13 raise the old monies that John paid, former President John Muhammad paid previously, mm -hmm. if you, they still had maintained that, mm -hmm. and all of them were able to pay 50,000. 50, they would make more money than the 420,000. It is 50,000 times 13. That is more money than when you only one person is no, able that, to pay. No, but that's the point I'm making to you. But that, I'm saying that, that the people that, that, that are complaining. Argument, no, that argument is based on assumption only one person. Well, but the, um, it is based on their own complaints that the money is difficult for them to raise. All of them have complained, but all of them still say that they'll raise the money. Well, I, I haven't heard that. That, that, no, that yeah, is news to them, me. But all of them will say, I well, can't. They they have say have we, said we, we that. Even at says he has budgeted for one million. Well, uh, they have said that. And that, and that 400, yeah, it's, it's nothing. Well, so, I, what, what I have heard, this so, is news, and I will take it so, from you. You are. So, yeah, you are, I, mean, you, I spoke to you. you, you yes. Yeah, but, so, but, but I'm saying to you that yeah. you watch it. You watch and see at the end of the day if that kind of money is available for, to all of them. Mm. Again, people have even suggested, and rightly so, that the current NDC executives, as it is constituted, appears to be working in favor of one individual, the former president, John Dramani Mahama, who appears to be, to be healthy. So you, you know what? Is that why they said the figure be, that high? It's one of the reasons, because he's wealthy. He's been former president, OK? And some uh, even argue that he supported several of them who are now uh, national officers. And so they are uh, drawing a scheme to favor him. That's their problem. But the point is that if you're a creative national executive, and you want to uh, raise money, sometimes you use the economy of scale. You can lower the money, and then everybody is, up, is able to get on board. And because of the numbers, what you get is higher. But that's not what they are doing. Yeah. They are rather increasing <coughs> it. And the whole idea is to uh, tilt the turf against some people. And that is their problem. And how, do you, and how did you come to that conclusion? Well, because you're saying I'm like saying, you know it for a fact. I'm saying the people themselves are saying they are complaining. But nobody has said that they, the, 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 the party is doing it because they want to favor JM. Well, but people are reasonable. People analyze this thing. So that's your analysis. Well, Don't I, I, I've, I've heard several persons say this. Oh. I've heard several like persons. I've like heard who? several persons. Well, some I do not recollect uh, uh, readily, but I've heard several. And I'm so, saying that even as, just, even as a reasonable person, this even is as your a reasonable position. person, uh -huh. I have come to that conclusion that okay. if the idea of the NDC is to raise money, this is not a smart way to do it. Okay. So I come to the conclusion that the motivation, the true motivation behind this uh, unprecedented gargantuan payment of a filing fee by the NDC is to tilt the field against people like Mr. Abagbabin and co, and to work for in, 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 in the advantage of Mr. Mahama. But you know what the danger is? The NDC should be now applying itself to correcting the systemic failures within the party. The person that the national officers clearly are supposed to be working for, himself has accused the system of being liable to all kinds of corruption. He went to Central Region. Former President John Ramani Mahama went to Central Region and said that resources that were given to the party never got to the grounds. You haven't fixed that system that is, that is amenable to corruption, that is amenable to thievery and diversion of party resources. Now the same system is asking for more resources. What is the guarantee now that even after they have collected this 4.2 billion, <coughs> the, all these resources will now go on the ground? When the leader at the time of the NDC accuses the NDC the structure of not being able to live up to uh, be responsible and accountable and be transparent and that they were diverting uh, resources and so on and so forth. And so the point that has to be made strongly is that, look, the way the NDC as a political party operates when it is in opposition is the same way the government that the NDC will form will operate when the NDC becomes a government. Okay, so, uh, hold, hold. And they are not creative. In the MPP, what did we do? You said I should speak about the MPP. Briefly. What did we do in the MPP? We took a modest filing fee of 85000 And then we appealed to all who are able to assist the system to come in and pay whatever amount that you believe you can pay. And that is why Phyllis is right. That uh, candidate Nanado Danko Kufuado then, now President Kufuado, was able to raise some extra 
and helped the party. But if we had insisted that that was part of the filing process, you know what it would have done? It would have meant that the other colleagues of his who were not able to raise that money would have been excluded from being able to contest that flag bearer. But because the MPP is a truly democratic party, because the MPP is a truly inclusive party, and that we do not seek to replace the democratic space and the decision-making space with money and monetize the system with a view to corrupting a potential government if we form it, we said that, look, let us set a modest filing fee. But anybody who can assist. And so from, uh, the, the candidate then, now president, came out and, uh, and, and, and assisted. And that did not disadvantage any of uh, his con uh, 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 contenders in any way. Okay, oh, hold it there. And, and Felix, I know you've made a lot of notes. So I'll come back to you once I hear from um, Kweku so that you can, you can respond to another thing. And I, I've seen that Doc, you've also made a lot of notes. So we'll be interrogating a bit of that also as we come for the second round. But, but Kweku, the, the fundamental argument I've heard this week is uh, that uh, for those who support what NDC had done, is that if you cannot raise 400,000 plus 20,000 to file and pick for, to run on the ticket of the NDC, then you have no business even seeking to be president. Interesting. Uh, there's, this, you know, there's a lot of literature out there, a lot of research material on this matter we are dealing with today by many of our civil society groups, uh, think tanks, CDD, IEA, many of them, over the last 10, 15 years, because this debate has been going on for a long time. And last night, when I got the topics, I decided to do some checks. But the question you asked, I wasn't going to start from there, but because you asked that question, I might have to read this thing. This is a paper by the CDD. It's in the name of the Professor E. Jima Woody. Mm. It's titled State Funding of Political Parties in Ghana. It was published in the, uh, the Critical Perspectives, number 24, October 2009. Uh, very interesting response to your question. Mm. He says, uh, uh, revenue, and I'm, I'm cutting it short because of time constraint, revenue and other core resource mobilization schemes are surely key credentials needed for effective governance in a democracy or any type of government. Lacking the ability and creativity to mobilize funds and other resources in lawful and legitimate manner should disqualify any person or party from seeking the mandate to govern a whole country, especially a resource scarce, quote unquote, one such as Ghana. Then he put in brackets this interesting one. It is fair to ask the question, just asking the question, what, what business do you have setting yourself up as a political party to seek a mandate to govern if you are uninventive, uncreative, taxpayer handout dependent type of political party or candidate? Perhaps. It is best to let the political marketplace decide by itself which parties remain economically viable. In a way, it answers your question. Yeah. I'm not saying I agree. <laughs> I'm just telling you that out there, there's a lot of literature that has attempted to interrogate these issues. And the people come from different perspectives. So there are people who definitely disagree with this thing that has been captured here. But it's actually a real concern or response to some of the issues. See, I said Nkitia makes the point about social democracy is not what's synonymous to poverty. poverty. I'm not sure I'm quoting him exactly. Uh, I've always been articulating another view. I'm a socialist. Right now, just, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> a lot of my <laughs> No, I'm a socialist, essentially. Indeed, I'm a Marxist. But reality check has made me a realist in terms of how I pursue my politics. And I've always been saying that socialism is not about sharing poverty. It is about promoting collective prosperity. Mm. But you see, in our country, and with some last 30, 40 years, because of how some people painted the picture of socialism, to show that you are a dedicated socialist, you have to wear a Afromosis. 
you have to wear a dryanke. You have to grow beard, beard like Osama bin Laden. Do Afro. And all those <laughs> things. There were, that was a distortion of what essentially socialism, or if you like, the downgrade social democracy meant. And so I appreciate where Asid Mukitia was coming from. In essential sense, he was saying what I say, what I believe in rather. See, if you look at the scale, and I'm going to be very controversial, and perhaps, you know, people will find it problematic. If you look at the scale of what the NDC is talking about, and I have no means of disputing what they are saying, even though I haven't done all my research uh, properly. They are talking about 300,000 delegates. Am I right? Yeah, plus, in fact. They are talking of yeah. people voting at 275 constituencies across the length and breadth of this country. They are also talking about some electoral commission fee, which I haven't double-checked, I have to be honest with you, in terms of its exactitude. I know part electoral commission charges some fees, mm -hmm. but I haven't checked the 3,000 per constituency. That's quite huge if it is. Yeah. And then other logistics. I said, okay, puts the cost of organizing everything at eight million. Yeah, we need to verify and double check. Yeah. But that's a huge figure. Yeah. Where is that money going to come from? If you look at the scale, the scope, the coverage, then I think four hundred and twenty thousand. That's putting the two together. It's understandable. It might be problematic to you. It may pose a challenge, but it's understandable. In this same document that I read earlier, and there's another one I'll refer to, Professor Jima was talking about the, let's see, in the light of above submissions that I read, mm -hmm. the following as options for effectively funding Ghanaian political parties are offered, of course, with an emphasis on private funding, because this paper appeared not to be too comfortable with state or public funding of our parties for good reasons, and we outline them. He says, funding of political parties must necessarily begin with party membership, mm. leadership, and chief promoters. Parties must be funded in the first instance by their own membership through dues and other membership donations. It is best that this is done through regular payment of dues, perhaps on a monthly basis, and frequent grassroots fund, uh, fundraising events like small sticks rifles, sales from bread and kinky or granite cakes made by members. Mm. That's the primary source. And he emphasizes private funding as opposed to state public funding. Now, there's another research document, and it's a very important one. Again, CDD was involved, but this was done by CDD in collaboration with Westminster uh, Foundation for Democracy titled The Cost of Politics in Ghana. Now you listen to this one. He says they did a, a survey between 